entrance really there, man? <laughs> Definitely lost. So we are here at the reception area. And here we have Miss McAllister, Miss Douglas, and Miss Mark. So we're here at the audiology room at the Linden Hospital complex. We are at the occupational therapy room at the rehabilitation center. Okay, so here we learn the difference between occupational therapy and physiotherapy. So for occupational therapy, this would help you to be independent in your day-to-day -day activities like ironing, ironing clothes, hanging clothes outside, um, washing, doing the dishes, etc. While physiotherapy would help you strengthen your muscles, help with strengthening. And here we have a few items here that would help to make the patients a bit more independent in their day-to-day -day lives. Mm -hmm. So here we have some clothes pins and they would actually, it, it helps with their um, fine motor skills and also their cognition because you have to actually put it on the line in specific positions. Here we have some cones. This is for your gross motor skills. You'll have to take them down and stack it in a specific order. And here we have something we call the parapati. My favorite part. Yes, so it's like play -Doh. <laughs> And you you hold it, you squeeze it. This will help with the extension of your hand muscles. We have some other stuff here. So this is actually called a digit band and digit resistance band. And it helps so strengthen the digits. And we also have this little apparatus here that looks like a connect four board, which actually helps the patient with fine motor skills as well as coordination. So here we have the splint room and the department. And here is examination and treatment room. Most times the patients who are new would be examined in this room. Over on this side, we have the therapy room. And most times these are the patients that will perform repeat treatment and so forth. Each patient will have a section that they would have a private space in which they can complete their therapy in. Also we have some washrooms here and at the back here we would have the gym where they would mostly do physiotherapy at the back here. So continuing with physiotherapy, we had a patient this morning who came in with painful or as well as school uses. So we would have advised her to do certain exercises so that she can strengthen and support her back better. Right, because remember physio is all about strengthening these muscles. So we started with the back extension and Chalmi here is going to demonstrate. Right, so that's going to support the lumbar region. Okay. And then she went into the W. That's going to strengthen the low bar. And then she concluded with the um, child's pose. Great. And then we further advise her to swim because swimming helps a lot with scoliosis, patients who have scoliosis. Hey, we had a patient who has a pulmonary fibrosis. Now for this patient, he came to the rehab department because he would have required chest physiotherapy. Now with the chest physiotherapy, the aim is basically to, for him in this case, is basically to have him breathing and taking very deep breaths. So we did um, what is known as the butterfly um, breathing technique, whereby you would have him breathe in, open his arms, and then breathe out capacity and repeat the exercise we also had another one where you would take about four breaths in intermittently hold the 
birth and then you would breed out through your legs. So for him, the plan is to basically optimize his breeding and allow him to be more comfortable with that. We also would have done some um, percussions on his chest wall and now the vibration from the percussions would help him to um, break up whatever mucus or so is within the chest wall so that he would be able to bring it up and have a more you know more com help him to be more comfortable with his breathing here i'm performing leg extensions with anna and now our vision this So here we're on the magnetic resistance salve drive and there are different scales so we can have zero resistance or we can pull the scale all the way down to six for maximum resistance. Now again in the case of the cenobitis, we're working towards increasing the strength of the muscles that support the knee. So using this resistance by can aid in strength. So a pleasant good day to you, Dr. Villery. This is Group 8's PowerPoint presentation on the governing disability laws and human rights. And this is a global perspective with focus on the Caribbean and Guyana. So these are our team members. And if we are to define the term disability, it refers to the physical, sensory, and cognitive or mental condition that may somewhat limit with an individual's ability to perform certain tasks, cause them not to be able to participate in activities, interact with their environment in the same way as someone who does not have a disability. Now, the WHO would have noted that about 60% of the world's population is currently living with a disability. So, when it comes to disability laws, it, they are enforced to ensure that persons with disability have equal rights, access, and opportunities as compared with persons that do not have a disability. So we must protect those persons' rights and allow them to be in a society that is fair as well. So these are our table of contents. So we have two basic laws that make up the international framework the United Nations Conventions on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And the principles of this convention is to respect inherent dignity, individual autonomy, including the freedom of dis disabled persons to make their own choices and the independence of these persons. We also have non-discrimination, full and effective participation and inclusion in society, respect for the difference and acceptance of persons with disabilities as part of human diversity and humanity, equality of opportunity, accessibility, and we have a lot more others, other um, other principles. The next one is the University Declaration of Human Rights, and this is thirty articles that is based on the freedom and rights of individuals in matters relating to right of life, equality, marriage, fair justice, religion, voting, education, migration, employment, social security, and rest and leisure. And all of this, um disabled persons are um we have a right to next slide please um so in the caribbean we have the inter-american convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against persons with disabilities act and this is basically created by the organization of american states which is a multilateral not lateral regional body um that created this and the objectives is to adopt legislative, social, educational, labor related, or any other measures needed to eliminate discrimination against persons with disabilities, as well as prevention of all forms of preventable disabilities, early detection, intervention, treatment, rehabilitation, and education. We also have the Declaration of 
Petionville, which was created by CARICOM. And this basically encourages all CARICOM states to, um, to be au fait with international law. Next slide, please. So this is just a table that shows where all the Caribbean countries are in relation to all of these conventions. And move on to Guyana. So we heard about the disability laws of the Caribbean. Now to focus on Guyana, we have the Disability Act of 2010, which is a 32-page document which aims to promote, protect, and ensure the full and equal enjoyment of rights and freedoms by persons with disabilities. Now to just use education as an example, they should have free primary and secondary education, not just free but quality education. The Ministry of Education would be responsible for equipping special schools with access to vocational training facilities. The next point prohibits discrimination, providing legal protection should anyone discriminate based on disability in various areas, such as the workplace. Now, if discriminated against, a complaint can be filed to the Commission and an employer who fails to comply or commit an offence is fine. The third point mandates reasonable accommodations to ensure equal opportunities for persons with disabilities. All health, recreational and workplace facilities should be equipped with suitable infrastructure to facilitate parking, ramps or elevators and other systems in place to accommodate disabled individuals. Lastly, establish a governing body which is known as the National Commission on Disability to oversee implementation and enforcement of the Act. Moving on to the next presenter. Right. so now we're going to look at the human rights perception. Now, Shana May would have covered this when she looked at the international part. Now, the human rights of persons with disabilities are protected under various international agreements, such as the CRPD that was covered before. Now, what we really want to focus on here is that we don't want to treat persons with disabilities as objects or as things that we have to give charity to. Rather, we want to treat persons with disabilities as persons or as subjects with rights who are and should be treated with dignity and should be allowed to have freedom of consent. I forgot, sorry. Implementation challenges. Common challenges in implementing disability laws include lack of awareness and sensitization, so limited understanding of disability rights and accommodation, hinders implementation efforts, insufficient resources and infrastructure. This impedes accessibility and support services provision, highlighting the need for government investment. Societal attitudes and stigma. Negative attitudes and stigma towards individuals with disabilities hinder inclusion and social integration. Legal complexity and enforcement. This may impede effective implementation of disability laws, requiring streamlined procedures and enhanced enforcement efforts. Next, recommendations for improvement. Strengthening enforcement mechanisms. Robust enforcement mechanisms are essential to ensure compliance with disability laws and protect the rights of individuals with disability. Increasing accessibility and inclusion efforts. This is critical for removing barriers faced by individuals with disabilities. Advocacy for policy reforms. This play a crucial role in, in advancing policy reforms that promote the rights and well-being of individuals with disabilities. Empowering self-advocacy. This will empower individuals with disabilities to assert their rights, express their needs and preferences, and actively participate in decision-making processes that affect their lives. All right, so we have a quote here by Robert M. Pencil, who said, there's no greater disability in society than the inability to see a person as more. Now, in conclusion, next slide please. Upholding disability rights is not just a legal obligation, but a moral imperative. It's essential for creating an inclusive and equitable society where every individual can thrive. So let's continue advocating and supporting disability rights to ensure equal opportunities and dignity for all. Together, we can build a world where everyone's potential is realized regardless of their ability or disability. And we have our references. Thank you.